Welcome to the next video of home glass hacks. In this video, you will learn how to blow sugar at home. You will learn some of the fundamentals of glass blowing skills right from your kitchen table. This process can be dangerous because we're working with hot sugar, which can burn you very easily. So please take the time to go through the health and safety instructions before you begin. All right. So you're going to be working with extremely hot melted sugar and you want to protect yourself from any harm that, that might cause. So get yourself a pair of cotton gloves like these. These are service gloves. They're made of cotton and they offer uh, some heat resistance. If they're very thin, the pair that you get, you can always double up on them. So put them on. So on top of your cotton gloves, you'll want to put some disposable rubber gloves. If you've got a latex allergy, make sure that you choose latex free gloves. In the unlikely event of any hot glucose or sugar syrup boiling and spattering, you want to make sure that you protect your eyes. So put on a pair of glasses or safety glasses. When we're working in the hot shop and we're blowing glass, we use stainless steel blowing irons. For our sugar glass blowing that we're doing today at home, you're going to use some stainless steel reusable straws. Make sure when you're looking for your straws online that you do not buy copper straws. They must be stainless steel. And this is because stainless steel is very bad at conducting heat, which acts in our favor because the heat from the tip where you're blowing your sugar doesn't transfer down and burn your hands or burn your mouth. So make sure that they're stainless steel. So what we're going to use for our glass, our sugar glass, you have some choices. If you can get Jolly Ranchers, they're very good. They are an American sweet, but they have corn syrup in them. And this is what really helps this sugar blowing process. These also have a longer working lifespan in them than regular boiled sweets because they do, don't brown. But if you can't get your hands on them, you can just go for regular boiled glucose sweets like these. As I said though, after a few heats, they tend to turn brown as the, as the sugar caramelizes. So when we're in the hot shop and we're blowing glass, we gather our glass out of what's called a crucible. It's made of a ceramic material and the liquid glass sits within the crucible as a pool of molten glass. And we go in and gather our molten glass up out of there. So our crucible that we're gonna be using at home is a heat resistant little ramekin. So you can use a glass ramekin or a ceramic ramekin. I'm gonna get two on the go. Today we're going to be melting both the glucose sweets in one and the Jolly Ranchers in another. Okay, so let's talk about our work surface. I'm working here at home in my kitchen. I've got a tiled floor, so if any uh, molten sugar falls on it, it won't damage the floor. I'm working on tabletop surface, and I've gone ahead and put a sheet of uh, steel that I had down to protect the surface. Of course, not everyone's gonna have that at home, so 
Alternatively, you can use a large baking tray. So baking trays are really handy for a number of reasons. Not only do they protect the surface underneath and they're non-flammable, they also can clean very easily if any liquid sugar gets on them. When we're working in the hot shop, we use what's called a marver, which comes from the Italian word for marble. And it's essentially a steel table where we shape the glass when it's molten as we're blowing. So today, my tray is going to be my marver at home. You want to make sure your setup is near your microwave. So you've got as short of a distance as possible to carry your crucible of your liquid sugar back and forth from the microwave. You want to make sure that other people in your house know what activity you're doing so they won't, don't bump into you on the way. If this spills on your skin, it will burn. So make sure that when you're carrying it, you have a short distance from your work surface to your microwave. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these in the microwave. To get them melted initially, I'm going to put them in for about a minute and have a look at them. My microwave is 800 watts that I'm using today. The one you have at home might be more powerful or less powerful. So it's really important that you microwave for the minimum amount of time that you can manage and then check what the sugar glass is looking like inside. It's really important not to overheat this sugar and have it boil and spatter. So when we're working in the hot shop and we're blowing glass on our blowing irons, glass will stick to the iron. And this naturally comes off after a few minutes when the glass is cooling down and it cracks off. However, the sugar will stick to your straws unless you clean them off. So pop a pan of water onto a gentle simmer. Make sure that you don't use a large amount of heat to cause it to boil. We want just a gentle simmer which we'll put our blowing irons into to clean off as we go. It's really important that the end of the blowing iron is proud so that you can pick it up without putting your hands over where steam will be coming out of the pan. So you just want the end of your blowing iron or the straw in the water. Right, let's check on our sugar glass. It's starting to melt a little bit, but I'm gonna put it on for another 30 seconds. So as you can see, the sugar glass is boiling at the moment. Before picking it up, I'm gonna give it a moment to settle. This is to make sure that the sugar isn't boiling in an erratic way and spatter onto my skin. If your container feels hot at all when you go to pick it up, just leave it to cool for a few moments. Take your blowing iron or your steel straw. We're going to gather just on the very end of this straw. So, a few tips for those who want to learn how to blow glass that you can take into the hot shop. When you're gathering on your blowing iron, you don't want to gather all the way up it. You want to make sure that your gather only covers the bottom few inches on your blowing iron. So in this case, we just want it to cover the bottom few centimeters. When we go in to gather, we want to make sure that we touch the edge of our glass or ceramic crucible, go into the liquid and create two to three rotations. If you don't do complete rotations, you'll end up with a wonky gather, as it's called in glass blowing. And this can lead to a wonky bubble that blows out from it. So make sure you go into your liquid, make two or three full rotations, and the action to come out of the liquid 
is very similar to how you gather honey. You want to do a scooping up and away action. So when you go in, you do two to three full rotations. Don't just pull out from the side, otherwise the liquid will start to come off. You want to do a scooping up and away action and continuously turn. From this point onwards, we're going to be turning our blowing iron. Go in at an angle from the side, dip into your liquid and start to turn. You want to do two or three full rotations. When you learn to glass blow, it can be very difficult to get a big gather at first, but with practice, you'll be able to get bigger gathers over time. So I need to keep turning, otherwise, my glob, as it's known in glass blowing terms, will go off center. It'll start to drip off. So I need to make sure I keep turning to keep it on center. Now I wanna make sure that I allow more of this sugar glass to come off of my blowing iron. So I can just gently hold it down. And you can see gravity has helped me out and pull some of the sugar off of the blowing iron. I'm going to go here and use my marber to give it a little shape around what we call the shoulder area of the gather. And now I'm going to attempt to blow. So you want to blow really gently to get your bubble started. You can see here the bubble has just poked out from the end of the blowing iron. But I want to make sure it doesn't blow out the shoulder area of my gather too quickly. So I'm going to go and give it another little marber where the shoulder area is and blow again. Have a look at it every time you blow it to see which way the bubble is blowing out. Again, it's blowing out a little bit thin at the shoulder area. So go back again and marver it. Every time we marver it, we cool that area. Glass will always want to blow out in the path of least resistance, either the hottest or the thinnest part. So we're trying to make this area cooler so it doesn't want to blow out as much. In glass blowing, in order to remove your bubble from your blowing arm, we create what's called a jack line with a tool called a jack. And what it is, is it's a constriction point past the iron into the bubble, and it's gonna be the narrowest point, and that's where the glass breaks off from the iron. Gently roll your glass bubble along the edge of a butter knife, Make sure the knife isn't sharp. You can hold it down onto your tray to create a flat bottom.
sewing glass blowing we do what's called a trail it's where we get another gather of glass and we trail it round the outside of our main bubble we detach two different ways we cut it off with the shears or else we just pull it off and detach that way I'll give it one final cool on the jack line using my at home jacks. And I should be able to detach it. So what you've learned today are skills that are directly transferable to those in the hot shop when we get a chance to get into the studios again. I hope you enjoyed this video and you have fun trying this technique out at home. Thanks for watching.